was updating our Apple podcast creator terms and conditions and tried to define a category for this podcast. Figured out it's somewhere between business, education, science, and comedy. They have me classified at listen at your own risk. Don't know what to think about that. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome! Another great episode of IBF On Demand. I'm your unclassified, everything you need host, Eric Wilson. You can find me at eric at ibf.org. That's eric at ibf.org. Thanks for the follows, the subscribes. Follow me on LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Discord. I'm everywhere now. You can find me here where you're getting your podcast. Wherever you get your podcast, that's where I'm at. At IBF On Demand, find me there, follow there, continue so you're you're ahead of the game when the next podcast comes out. I want to thank Arkiva. We're driving business transformation by solving what others cannot. So they changed their logo last one, a couple, about a month ago or so, and driving business transformation by solving what others cannot. Arkiva, thank you for the sponsorship. Number one problem when it comes to SNOP. When we look at SNOP uh, implementations, when we talk to organizations that have SNOP, when we look at the assessments of maturity, one of the number one problems that comes outside of culture is data. Bad data becomes one of the number one problems organizations face. There's a lack of visualization with data. They're not seeing exactly what's happening and being able to make proper decisions with. We talked about last time, you know, decisions. Being able to visualize helps you make better decisions. Bad data will help you make bad decisions. So having good data, having being able to see the data, and having it timely are key aspects to improve decision making in SNOP. And a lot of organizations are lacking at that. At the same time, when you looked at the SNOP steps. The traditional steps of data gathering, demand planning, SNOP, executive SNOP, those traditional steps don't exist now. Data gathering, less than 5% of organizations we uh, survey actually do a formalized data gathering step. That doesn't negate the need to focus on data because we already said one of the number one problems is bad data, not being able to visualize, not getting it timely. So we see a problem at the same time a formalized data gathering steps no longer part of an SNOP process. I'm not saying we need a formalized SA data gathering step as an SNOP sales and operations process, but I am saying we do need to focus on data and it's important we do make that part of our data governance, classification, segmentation, understanding your data is an important aspect of SNOP. That's the reason I'm bringing on the classification guru, the mistress of data, Susan Walsh. With a decade of experience fixing your dirty data, Susan Walsh is the classification guru. Susan is the founder of managing director of The Classification. She is an industry thought leader, TEDx speaker, author of Between the Spreadsheets, Classifying and Fixing Dirty Data, also a great lip syncer as well. Susan has developed a methodology for accurately and effectively classifying, cleansing, checking data for errors, which will need to prevent costly mistakes. You can actually contact her at Susan at the classification guru.com, but you have the advantage of seeing her here today in our podcast. Please help me welcome Susan Walsh. So welcome, Susan. Thank you so much for having me. It's exciting to have you. I figure we're going to start off with some like lip syncing or something. Do some, do a duet lip sync or something. Oh, oh, my, my voice <laughs> hurts today. My lips hurt. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's great when watching I, all of. No, go ahead. I was just saying, only if you do it with me. 
<laughs> yeah, so I said it'd be a duet. It'd be a duet lip sync here. Yeah. We got a two box going on right now. So, you yeah. know, we're, we're, we're right next to each other. Or I don't know which side you're on, but we can do this duet lip sync. I mean, it's yeah. been great watching all, all the content you put out and some of the fun things you put out as well. So, I mean, you're definitely keeping in front of people and, and keeping not only the entertained, but the in- insights that you do as well. So I, I you. appreciate you bringing that to our audience now as oh, well. Thanks. I think I, I do this for me. Uh, so I'm having fun. If I wasn't having fun, I wouldn't be doing it. I can completely um, understand that. And I just, yeah, I just feel like, you know, I can be in data and procurement and be fun as well. They're not mutually exclusive. Yeah, that's what I always always strive, you know, a little bit of entertainment, a little bit of education. Now, if the entertainment outweighs the education sometimes, hey, I had fun doing it, you know. <laughs> if they remember you that's the main thing like the, there the you go sinks, they're taking over i go to events and people don't say oh i love your book or i love your content or i love your topic it's i love your lip syncs <laughs> see that's what i remember you for as well so it's, it's what yeah. you, what you're known for now then yeah. so well you're also known for data you're the classification guru yeah. so you're known for data now as well yes. and i said a lot of people getting into sales and operations planning or getting into demand planning, it requires data to be able to do those things. And they have bad data. But what are some other consequences, even outside of that, of bad data inside of organizations? I'm I'm sure you've seen some horror stories. What's some consequences of bad data? Well, I think, first of all, we all work with data, but we're not all data people. And I think we have to recognize that a little bit more when we're working in organizations and things that everybody plays a really important part in cleaning and maintaining that data, but we're not all professionals in that area. And it can be quite intimidating to some people. And some things that can be a consequence of that can be things like, you know, you're in the US, I'm in the UK, we're using different date formats, we can't get documents to match up because the dates are in different formats. And then someone spends ages manually doing something that they didn't need to do. So waste maybe days, if not hours, doing something. Um, Things like units of measurement. You know, I know of, I've heard of a story where someone had put in the dimensions of a, a TV as like one centimeter by one centimeter rather than, I guess, a meter by a meter. So in terms of load planning, you think you can get hundreds of the things on there, but the reality is you you can't. Um, And that can cause like huge disruption to the business. You know, you can't, you've got extra stock in your warehouse that you don't know where to put. You get fined for not delivering on time by your customer. Um, All kinds of problems can, can result from one small little data error. You know, we've seen those problems, especially in forecasting. I mean, you got bad data, missing data, things of that sort. But you mentioned just the labels or or the structure of the data is going to be slightly different. I mean, I've seen seven ways to do United States, U, oh, dot, S, yeah. dot, U.S. I mean, USA. USA? I mean, the, all yeah. the, exactly. So that America? becomes a problem. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So all the different – those become problems. How can you then – how can you, what can you do to start isolating and seeing some of those data issues so you can start working on them so you'd have a clean data set to start forecasting with? Well, first of all, you have to get everybody on the same page. So it's all about the data in poop. And actually, in the forecasting world, I was just going to say it's those rogue zeros that cause all the problems. I only meant to order 10, not 100 or 1,000. Um, <laughs> you know, it's... and. And it's the same same issues. Get everybody to agree a set standard. This is how we're going to input data. It's going to be in this format. And also control what people can put into certain columns. You know, some might be mandatory, or maybe sometimes you can do drop down lists, although those themselves have problems because people are lazy and naturally will just pick the first thing. So you have to balance it out, but getting people to understand the importance of it and why, you know, how you could be helping your colleagues sitting across the office just by putting a little bit more information in. That means they're not going to spend two hours doing something else. Uh, It could be really powerful. And I guess the other thing is 
I'm a real strong believer in data maintenance. So you cannot keep your data clean if you don't maintain it. You have to check it regularly. You have to make sure that it's still the way it's supposed to be because people can delete things. People can cut and paste over things. People can have different opinions. But the most important thing is if you're looking at your data on a daily or weekly basis or, or somewhere somewhere in that range, you start to know when things don't look right. So for example, you accidentally put in a thousand units instead of a hundred. You know that every week you're ordering a hundred units. Some you're gonna spot that that difference. But if you don't look at that data every week, you're not gonna know that it's any different. So it really helps to maintain that integrity and quality of the data if you're looking at it regularly. And keep and calling people out when things are wrong as well. That'd be important as well. So, so we yeah. got to define your definitions, get everybody on the same page as what you wanted to do. Make sure that you have some maintenance so it doesn't get screwed up again. Yeah. In between, I'm assuming you're doing some type of maybe, let's say, classification or something of that sort. You are the classification awesome. guru. Yeah. So. <laughs> and actually, you know, it's just in the procurement space. But now I'm classifying and categorizing every kind of data because – data is data at the end of the day. Um, I've categorized retail data, I've categorized foods, I've categorized, you know, spend data. So, uh, and the thing that I uh, say all the time, because obviously I have, I have four people on my team classifying data now. The most important thing is we need to keep our consistency and our standards the same. So I came up with something to help them remember that, which is making sure your data has its coat on. So it should always have a nice little jacket on. It should always be consistent. So everybody's using the same terminology, the same units of measure, the same processes, the same procedures. It's organized. So categorize it in a way that you need it so you can pull out that information really quickly. Um, you know, if you need to look at it by country or division or region or by buyer or by department, categorize it like that. And then you can pull off a report so quickly. I mean, how many people within companies are sitting on a weekly basis trying to cut and paste different spreadsheets together to get what they want when all you need to do is a quick view look up and categorize it. So make sure it's, it's organized. Then of course, it's got to be accurate. So make sure it's as, as accurate as possible. I would never claim that you could get your data 100% accurate. If you do, it's not going to stay like that for very long. Too many people involved. And then finally, once you have those things, you have trustworthy data. And then that's when the magic happens. You know, you can go to your senior managers, um, senior level decision makers and say, right, these are the numbers. This is exactly what we're doing. This is what we're buying. This is what we're selling. This is what we're forecasting. And we know these numbers are right. Because okay. quite often those people in those higher levels, they, they trust the numbers you give them. They don't necessarily know how to look to check, to check or verify them. They are trusting you. Hmm. So uh, you mentioned first, you, you mentioned data is data. I would say yes, but except for some parts in the Southern United States, it's data, but we don't talk, <laughs> yes. we don't, we don't talk yeah. about that. We don't want, it's data. <laughs> So data is data or data for some, I guess. Yeah. Uh, classification, since, I mean, you, you, you told a lot of what it's doing. You mentioned the code. We'll get back to the code in a second. But for some of the audience, I mean, if you had to define what classification is then as a data mining or what you're doing, what yeah. is classification? So there's actually two different types of classification, which I did not find out until I set up my business. The kind of classification that I do is spend data classification. So that is taking all the transactions from a business, everything they've ever spent their money on, and I'll categorize it into groups. So for example, the, the best way that I can explain it is think of your bank statement. You might already have a banking app that helps you categorize it into buckets of what you've spent your money on. Well, I'm just doing that on a massive scale in more detail. So rather than you just knowing you bought stationery, you might know how many pens, pencils, paper, and sticky notes you bought, or how many computers versus keyboards versus mouse versus monitor. That's that's what I'm doing. 
The other type of categorization is like file hierarchy and structure. It's more file security. That's a whole other murky area that I do not want to get involved in. <laughs> That's okay. We're more in line with what you do as classification as well, because yeah. you're looking at spin classification saying, yeah, this is a post-it note. This is pins. This is, you know, what you're spending the money on. Now, from a planning perspective, I could equally see the importance of understanding here's the customers that are e-commerce, here's the customers that are brick and mortar, here's the customers that, you know, warehouse, or here's yeah. the customers that's buying this versus that. It's the same classification. You're taking yeah. a large group and putting them into sub-manageable groups that they can then do something with or have or, more knowledge about. Yeah, or, or imagine you have those four different sources of, of um, channels where you're selling things, but that, that post-it note, is called a post-it note at supplier A. Supplier B call them sticky notes. Supplier C <laughs> call them a notepad. And they're all the same thing. So categorizing it to the same thing, you can get a picture of how much you're either selling or buying or you know forecasting and, and you're not missing anything out. Because you know everyone kind of calls things slightly differently, you know. And again, the, you know, Europe versus the UK versus the US versus Canada, we're all calling the same thing something slightly different, or spelling the same thing slightly differently. That and is that'll true. That creates multiple versions of the same thing. So you think you're selling ten of this? Actually, you're selling a hundred because there's a whole load of sales over here that haven't been accounted for because it's named something different. Hmm. That's that's a great great point, and the other thing you mentioned in, in that then or alluded to was the if we're breaking these into smaller subgroups so we can manage. You're also you can see things better then. So I'm I'm assuming it plays into some visualization of instead of looking at all your data, yeah, looking at a manageable subgroups you can actually see things with now, see patterns, see stuff. You would be amazed that most companies, and the, the larger it is, the worse it is, they don't have visibility on just how much you be spending on IT, how much you be spending on facilities, how much you be spending on consultancy, because it's all over the place. And sometimes in these data sets, it's just a person's name. So unless you look at the invoice description as well and have some context around what you're looking at, there's no way that you could know that it was consultancy. Could be a handyman for all you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So, so we have the classification, we got the visualization, we got small groups we can do things with now. And you mentioned yeah. you mentioned the code, putting the code on your data, uh, and, and I love that acronym for it. It's consistency, organization, accuracy, trustworthiness. Those, Top marks. Those, okay, so that's your code. Yeah. Uh, so, and it's and you're really looking to try to align whether it be something you do for organizations that you're doing a great job for organizations, or if they're doing it internally, something they kind of keep, you know, put their own code on it. That yeah. consistency, organization, accuracy, and trustworthiness is kind of the four keys in data governance in classification that you're talking about. I mean, uh, and is that correct? The, yeah. And the easiest thing I would say is I do this um, on training courses all the time. If they're live, I ask people to put, how they format their dates in the chat. Now I've done this for specific organizations where they all are based in the same country and they are still formatting their dates differently. Some are doing month, month, day, day, year, year. Some are doing day, day, month, month, year, year. Some are doing year first. And that's just within one company. <laughs> if you did that within your own company, you would find the same thing. Everybody's, or people are using different date formats for different documents. You know, Excel, it's one way. A folder is another. And then a contract might be a different kind of date format. So it's, um, it can have a real impact on, on what you see as we're So that's the consistency saying. piece then, right? Yeah. So what's the organization piece of it? Think, think of your wardrobe or your closet. And you cut to the end of the day, I just throw my shirt in there and I'll get it another day. And then you go back another day to get that shirt and you've got to rake around. You can't find it. 
if you had hung it up nicely and put it with all the other sharps and maybe color coordinated if you're as crazy as me then you could have just gone into that closet picked it up and and gone but no but no it's it's sitting in the bottom somewhere it's been crumpled you're gonna to have to iron it it's going to take it to get it right data is exactly the same you know organize your data so um yeah which departments which categories which retailers which countries which business units whatever you want you can categorize it by but if you don't categorize it you're not going to be able to find information that makes sense so i mean my organ my closet's organized color short sleeve long sleeve pant nice yeah, to so hear I, it I, love I, it i get it well, I'm on, I'm sure I'm on the some spectrum somewhere or something. Another oh computer. yeah, we all are. If you're we all data, are. I mean, it's pretty much guaranteed. <laughs> so we, I understand the organization, and, and that's going to help for retrievals then as well. When, it, it, and because one of the things that's not in your coat that I keep hearing about is timely, timely access ah, to data, yeah. and that seems to be an important thing for companies is to be able to access things quicker and and the organization i think is going to help with that timely aspect of it i mean i hear stories a lot of of people prepare like taking weeks to prepare reports for end of month and it's like you i'm pretty sure that you could streamline that process and have that done in a few days rather than weeks um i worked with a client last year Saved them 10 hours a week in total through um, streamlining the process. And then because we streamlined the process, they didn't have the queries that they had to resolve because it wasn't being put in manually. We were using some lookups in, a, in an Excel sheet. That was it. Hmm. It's You don't realize how long these things take. You just sit in a, in a vacu time vacuum when you're working through these things. And nobody counts it because it just has to get done. I understand. I've seen that many and many a times as well in organizations. So organizing your data is going to definitely help with those. So then it brings us to the next one. After you have a consistency of your labels and your formatting, you can have the organization so everything's classified. Now everything's going to be 100% accurate then, right? Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> I would say, I always say as accurate as it can be because it's a myth to say 100% accurate. And also, depending on the data that you're working with really depends on the requirements of what accuracy is. So if you're in finance, those numbers have to be spot on 100%. But if you are entering customer information or supplier information, you know, Although it's an absolute pain in the butt to have to fix it, you know, if you accidentally misspell the surname or miss some information, it's not as bad. And, and I've heard some companies, CDOs say, you know, it's fit for purpose is better than accuracy. Yeah, that's a good one, um, fit for purpose. And, and you can, yeah, you can, you can spend your days striving for accuracy and you'll never find it. And guess what? It's the same thing in the demand planning and business forecasting world. They strive for 100% accuracy and they never get it either. So. I, I used to, to do demand planning and forecasting and, and yes. I had a pretty good, I had some of the best rates in the company. But, you know, you can never account for stock shortages, uh, delivery no. failures, like delivery crashes, you know, uh, all those things. You know, you can only do so much. Exactly. Which is the last one in your coat is trustworthy. So is this the ongoing or is this just, just trusting the information, uh, you know, kind of the story you're te using to, to tell the executives and make sure that people kind of trust what is being said? Well, how often do you hear our data is rubbish? You don't trust it. Like whether it's forecasting, Lots. whether it's planning. Yes. People, people don't use it. You show them something and they don't, they don't believe it. If you can start to prove and you prove it through accurate data by with charts and visualizations, look, we got this, we got this accuracy, right? We planned within 10% variance here, look. Uh, but you, you have to have the coat on to be able to do that. And okay. 
know, trust, you know, Timely is a really good tea, actually. And if I hadn't already developed the <laughs> quotes, then Timely would be a good one as well. But, but I think it's important for people to trust the data as well so that they use it. Because so, okay. it just gets, you know, people do all these great charts and visualizations and then they just get left on one's desk or in a box somewhere. That that's definitely I've seen that happen as well. So yeah. we, we, we're taking the journey now to classifying our data better because a lot of the companies, the biggest complaint is bad data, bad data, junk in, junk out when they're coming to the forecasting. I mean, that's a big complaint. So we have the classifying the data. We have the consistency, organization, accuracy, trustworthy. We know where we want to go. But then taking a step back that your organization that's drowning in data now drowning in bad data now, doesn't know what they have and where to start. Where do they start? Where's that first step they need to take? Comes from a famous book, start with the end in mind. What do you want to achieve from your data? And then how can you get there in a small step? So, you know, there, there might be a whole load of data that's messy, but you don't actually need it. So you don't need to worry about cleaning it because you're not going to use it. Look at uh, if it's, you know, reporting what what are the key measures we need to know let's focus on getting that input in correctly or if it's forecasting you know we need to look at historical data what do we need from that historical sales numbers did it, uh, think about that and then build a, a process to start tackling it and, and understand that this won't happen overnight you can't do it all at once. Small, small manageable steps is, is going to be far more effective than just a, a complete overhaul where people are not used to change. You know, they've done it a certain way for like 20 years and they don't want to change. Small steps they're, they're probably going to be better with, um, which is ultimately going to lead to, to an easier uh, transition. Okay. Well, great. Unfortunately, I think we're out of time. So I want to thank oh. you, the mistress of data and author of business. I mean, between the sheets, I'm sorry, between the spreadsheets. Yeah. So I'm to just have a copy here. <laughs> there you go. Always. So I want to thank happy. you for being part of this and, and I look forward thank to you. continuing to watch all your yes. your your talks and and lip syncs and information that you bring as well. And I'm glad Likewise. you could bring some of that to our audience as yeah, well. Thank us as well as a community it's brilliant yeah it's great so i look forward to maybe seeing you at a conference in the future and oh, absolutely our paths will cross again i'm sure they will thank you thank you very much and ciao bye that was a fun interview we did i mean i knew it was going to be entertaining she's as entertaining and insightful as well so i knew she'd bring some of that energy about data and classification to this podcast and she didn't disappoint it was a great podcast so when you're looking at classification, we talked about the definition, uh, and I mentioned this, Lori, classification is to help understand and analyze data by putting them into a, a large data set into smaller, manageable subgroups. This can be highlight attributes. It can make help you make better predictions. It can help you see things, visualize things. All of that is being able to put in manageable subgroups so you can start doing something with it, whether it be forecasting, whether it be data cleansing, whether it be understanding your spend like she's doing whatever we're doing that's the reason we're classifying and looking at classification of our data you can think about you know really classifying in a couple of different ways either separate similar to one another or separate things that are dissimilar from one another there's a two different ways you can look about it being able to classify your data by putting things in similar type of groups or things that are dim dissimilar from one another to be able to understand the dissimilarities. Either one, you're trying to understand things that are like attributes or things that are truly different so you can treat them different or see them differently then as well. Typical applications are, you know, be able to understand them as, 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 to be able to see issues in the data, to be able to find different labels that are mean the same things but are labeled differently. Other important step is being able to separate things out so you can utilize them differently in forecasting. 
You may forecast the e-commerce differently th than you do with brick and mortar. It has a different seasonal profile. Or you have a different input uh, that you can do as a causal type input for this. So being able to do a lot, do some segmentation, some classification, some type of you know beforehand helps you apply different algorithms, apply different types of process, planning processes you might do to it differently. So all that's important and in being able to really understand. And you don't need to really go full bore machine learning, Bayesian classifier, decision trees out of the gate. There's very simple things you can do even in Excel, a lot of what she's just talking about was Excel based just to understand and, 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 and start to see your data differently. There's simple rules based and constraint based methods that you have the capability of doing. An ABC XYZ type of analysis. Those are rules based, constraint based type of, of segmentation that can be done. And it's important that you can uh, utilize that and then be able to do things more with it. The importance of it, and she mentioned the coat, uh, look at the coat as one option type situations. Another way to look at this is, is really what you're focusing on is making sure you're, you, you're sharing the same language. It, it, you're making sure that you have consistency in, in what you're doing. You have that data governance going forward. And all those things have that advantage of you will have the similar language and being able to report out. When you're talking about data, people will be talking about the same things. It will save you time. It builds collaboration and transparency. Having the same data sources, having the same language data helps build that collaboration and transparency. Transparency, And it makes data meaningful. It makes something meaningful you can use inside your organization. Well, I'm going back to try to reclassify the podcast, maybe hopefully as helpful now going forward. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know what categories of topics you'd like to hear in the future. My name is Eric Wilson. You can find me at eric at ibf.org. That's eric at ibf.org. You can hopefully... Be part of IBF going forward. You can see a lot of what they're doing going forward. They have the SNOP assessments I've talked about. A lot of the things we talk about is data in as well. Besides data, it is a people process, data, analytics, technology. Those are the different attributes that we're going to classify and look at your organizations with. We can either do that free online at IBF.org under the maturity assessment or reach out to me at eric, to, eric at IBF.org. Happy to work with you individually to help you uh, on what you're doing. We do have a sponsor for this as well, Arkiva, driving business transformation by solving what others cannot. So check them out now as well. Thank Arkiva for being part of this. And as always, in closing, through COVID, we've been doing this. It started off because this podcast actually began over two years ago because of COVID. It became a joke. I ended this. So keeping the tradition going for us, in closing for our podcast, don't forget. Wash your hands.